And joining us live via Skype to discuss the spike in the number of cases in Nigeria is Tunji Ladner, CEO and founder of the West Africa NGO Network, Wagonet. Good morning, Mr. Ladner. Can you hear me? Good morning. Hey, uh, good morning. Hi, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Good to be hey. with you this morning. Um, so let's very quickly look at I, the... My pleasure to be with you. All right, so let's look at the increasing numbers uh, in the figures of rising cases. We can see that more states are recording both index cases and more cases to what they have had before. What are we not getting right, in your opinion? It's not so much as what are we not getting right. It's, it's much more a question of how are we measuring the unfolding uh, pandemic. I think we've gotten to the point where the numbers are being compounded if you look back over the last month, we started off with single digits and double digits, now triple digits. What this simply means is that uh, in spite of our best efforts, the virus itself is spreading among communities. So it's not really a function of what are we not getting right. But if specifically what we're not getting right is that in certain parts of the country, noticeably up north, in places like Kano, there's a whole mystery about the actual numbers there. There have been reports about uh, mysterious deaths, for instance, and how that falls into the epidemiological profile of Nigeria is yet to be determined by NC, uh, the national um, NCDC and the Ministry of Health. So it is really, um, it, the, the, the numbers are comforting to be sure, but there's a very strong possibility that the numbers are way more than we think they are. Now let's look at policies. Uh, what policies would you suggest that our leadership begin to look at seriously, especially regarding COVID-19? Well, my own response to that is not, you know, it's COVID-19 is just one of the many demics, as I say, that is confronting Nigeria. And you can't look at it without expanding the argument to look at the entire body politics. So we have the pandemic, which is a public health risk. It poses an existential risk to be sure. But there are some other things that are happening at this particular time that threatens the very, very um, corporate existence of Nigeria. I call them the other demics. It's almost like the uh, four horsemen of the apocalypse from the Book of Revelations matching in now. So you have, on the one hand, you have the uh, issue of the pandemic, which is very serious. The other thing we have is the total collapse of the oil market, the end of the carbon era as we know it. Uh, the, the third part of it that is also very important for us is just the question of uh, the leadership vacuum at the very center of, of, uh, of our polity. Then the fourth is rising uh, anger and hunger in the land. So all of these things combined, you know, constitute what I describe as the perfect storm of challenges. So even if we take care of uh, the, the pandemic itself and manage to uh, contain it, Right. There are other things that are coming at exactly the same time. So we, we need, by way of policy now, not just to look at the pandemic itself, but look at the pandemic as an opportunity to begin to rectify some of the structural inadequacies of the Nigerian body politic. Mm -hmm. And that's the only way we can, we can, we can actually move forward. Uh, Post-COVID, uh, uh, it's a whole different reality. It's a brave new world. Nobody's quite sure what and how it's going to play out. So if our leaders and policymakers and our politicians think that they can carry on the way they've been carrying on pre this pandemic, we're going to be in big, big trouble. This thing has upended the world as we know it. And we have to respond to, to it as, as something that is an existential threat to Nigeria, not just an episodic incident where, oh, it's like Ebola, it'll come and it'll go. This is not going to come and go. We're going to be in this space for a long time. All right, let's look at uh, assessment of uh, how we have managed it, even as a nation and as a people, from leadership and to the people who are being led. Uh, how do you look at it, the management of the outbreak from you know, when we heard of it and up to now, where we are currently? Well, there are two leading lights in all this. Uh, the first one is the Director General of the NCDC and his minister, as the Federal Minister for uh, Health. And of course, we also have to look at the, the first point of contact for the first index case that is recorded, which is Lagos State. So kudos to Lagos State government that they actually had a strategy in place, proactively in place. And I think these are the lessons 
that we learned from the handling of uh, the previous uh, contagion, the Ebola crisis. So there were some residual institutional mechanisms and processes that enabled them to very rapidly uh, address this issue. Uh, so to that, issue, to that question, yes, we, we congratulate both of them. Uh, but the, the challenges are way larger than just the, uh, the work being done in Lagos State, uh, which is also, also has its own challenges. And the attempt at coordinating at the national level, which also has its own challenges. Um, to actually get a truly national and federal approach to it is not just the work of the government per se. It is a national emergency. And everybody should roll up their sleeves and contribute whichever way they, they can. Mm -hmm. What do we expect from the citizenry? Compliance and understanding to the extent to which the nature of the virus itself is that it spreads through people. So the containment strategies, the stay-at-home thing, as onerous as it is, are very necessary to, to contain it. We are also mindful of the, of the challenges of livelihood. I mean, this is really uh, a battle between trying to save lives and trying to preserve livelihood. And it's a very fine balance. I don't think anybody has the answers yet. But so far, it's been calibrated in a way in which at least the numbers you just released today are not as scary uh, as one might, might think. But I do not think that we should um, be comforted by those numbers because mm -hmm. the nature of this um, uh, particular pandemic as evidenced by its spread everywhere else is that it gets to a tipping point where the numbers become compounded. Compounded meaning that it jumps from 2 to 4, then 4 to 8, and 8 to 12. And it can rise very, very rapidly. So uh we're not out of the woods yet, to be sure. And right, lastly, uh, yesterday the NCDC boss tweeted, and I read, uh, he says, we are desperately looking for more RNA extraction kits as we expand the COVID-19 testing. In fact, he went further to even give specifics of uh, the types uh, that are needed. Now, in your opinion, is it a question of, uh, you know, we are being overwhelmed, we are already overwhelmed, or is it a question of maybe not planning or foreseeing that we, we will come to this point? It's difficult because this is what you might describe as a black swan event. Nobody predicted this. Although we've had prior understanding of uh, viruses and pandemics globally, before this you had MERS, Middle Eastern uh, Respiratory Syndrome, you had SARS, you had uh, swine flu. Nobody has predicted that this would happen in the way it has happened and the rapidity which it has spread. So what the, uh, uh, the, the NDCD uh, chief was saying was that they need technical support in terms of testing kits. And I don't think uh, anybody could have planned that there'd be a need for this. Also, be mindful of the fact that the uh, uh, NCDC is not just battling um, um, this virus. They've been having challenges with cholera. There's also, uh, uh, contemporaneously, uh, an outbreak of Lassa fever, which has also killed healthcare workers and lots of Nigerians. I think by last count, maybe a thousand Nigerians have died. So the NCDC is doing its best right, to, to fight on multiple battlegrounds, multiple fronts. But the bottom line is, beneath all of this plague, beneath all this contagion, beneath all these epidemics, is the absolute collapse or non-existence of a functioning healthcare sector. And the blame was necessarily lie with the government and compounded over history, all the previous government before this one. All right, thank you so very much, uh, Mr. Ladna. That's all that we're able to take. And please do keep safe yeah. there. Oh, thank you, you too. Stay, stay sheltered, provisioned, and safe. Thank you so much for having me.